Oh yes. my goodness. Um, Just talk over the beginning, Paul. It's all good. Is he oh, again? This, is hardly count. this hardly counts. Well, this does. Shush. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Very slick there, Josh. Very slick. I think Joe's probably done a better job on our uh, social channels. Um, John, you're on mute. Double mute. <laughs> right, you buggers. Who did that? I now look like a complete old man again. <laughs> Should we make a start? So it then? isn't just yeah, me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the EV Cafe. Um, today we will be taking a closer look at some of the most innovative shows that have raised the bar in the zero emission transport space. But before we rev up our electric motors, let's give a big shout out to our gold partners who are the unsung heroes behind the scenes making it all happen for us at the EV Cafe. These pioneers in the e-mobility value chain use lower CO2 concrete in the ground and hook us up with slick EV charging infrastructure that runs on renewable energy sources. Plus, they've got our backs with top-notch vehicle breakdown and charger assistance, in-life monitoring and insurance policies to keep us safe and sound. So let's give, give a round of applause to the AA, My Energy, Geotab, Churchill, EV Civils and Plug Me In their support and dedication to a brighter and greener future. Um, so let's now get down to business. I'm your host, Johnny Berry, and in my day job, I'm head of decarbonisation at Navuna Vehicle Solutions. And joining me today is the amazing team that makes up the rest of the EV Cafe crew. So let's start by saying hello to Paul. <laughs> Where are you joining us from today? <laughs> well, very excitingly, I will give you a little taste of exactly where I'm joining you from. I'm at the commercial vehicle, so which of course makes me very, very excited. Uh, and I'm actually on the Maxis stand, um, and there is some fantastic things going on here. As you can see, a really busy stand. There's a E-Deliver 7 just there. If I go any further, the Wi-Fi gets dreadful. So um, he did it a seven, and some, which is brand new, fantastic electric van, lots of amazing things all around the show. So if you get a chance to come to this TV show, this is a good one. And I think the subject today is um, shows. Very fitting, hey. Yeah. Sam, and I'm, great, great to have you here with us and on time. Certainly makes for a change. Has <laughs> <laughs> he frozen there? <laughs> yeah, or he's gone to sleep, so, by the way. <laughs> so we know that that wasn't scripted because he's never been able to say that before. <laughs> Paul, you, you can shut up anytime you like, really. All right, is he done? Okay. Johnny, yes, uh, I'm here too. Uh, hive of activity and one, my one takeaway so far having been here for an hour is i'm sat in a cafe and i sat down and there was a chap on his mobile phone right next to me quite loud saying every stall i go to there's an electric vehicle on it these days and i thought yes yes there is it was only a few short years ago where there was one or two in this hall or halls uh, and now there's hundreds of them so it's definitely a really indicative sign i think um, that events are definitely seeing a lot more electric vehicles in them uh, and more commercial vehicles too which, which paul will be delighted about so um so yeah, as all good. the whole economy. <laughs> yeah, thanks um, for another intro. No oh, worries, Sam. Sam. Johnny, carry on. Yeah, sorry, Sam, you seem to be breaking up a little bit there. So, um, JC, a warm hello to you. Um, perhaps you can tell us about the mailroom and how an audience member might be able to win a mug today. You can. So hello, everybody. The mail room. Well, this is what I look after. It's the engine room of the EV Cafe because it's where you get to ask the questions and we can put them to our guests. The best question of the day that goes into the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen gets to win the now much loved EV Cafe mug. Oh, yes. You can have your very own. We may even deliver it personally. Who knows? Depends where you are. So, Let's get those questions into the Q&A box. It's all about shows, and shows are nothing without you people, just like us. So let us know what you think. Have your chats in the uh, chat box, right-hand side of your screen, and the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen for those pithy little questions that want to be in with the chance of winning a mug. And now, 
over to what can only be described as a fruit bowl of Sarah Sloman. <laughs> a fruit bowl or a fruit bat? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, last work couple days. <laughs> Hello, Sarah, and uh, I believe you're you're live in the studio this morning. I am live in a studio. Well, actually, I'm no. I'm in a boardroom in Botley near Oxford. Um, but it, I've just got serious FOMO about not being at the CV show. So as terrible as the Wi-Fi is, I do enjoy living vicariously through you guys. And please keep the LinkedIn tags for EV Cafe coming. Anything interesting you see out there that you think we should know about, tag us on your socials so that we can have a peek. Um, but I am live from a different type of studio. That was seamless, wasn't it? <laughs> because it is time for the EV Cafe news on a new time slot because it's it's prevalent that we have to do it now for the rest of the show to come. So hello and welcome to the EV Cafe news. I'm Sarah Sloman. It's lunchtime and I'm in Oxford, not in the studio, not at home and not at the commercial vehicle show either. Hashtag FOMO, but very, very, very happy to be here nonetheless. But as ever, this is the positive news. And because this is an event special, I found myself all overcome with excitement as we head into a rundown of the latest EV event hits, featuring in-person performances from popular EV specialists and well-known EV brands who support the EV Cafe. First and feisty for the spring and summer to come, we have fully charged south at Funky Farmer International at the end of April. And hot on its heels is the ITT Hub 10th and 11th of May in the same venue. Not for the faint-hearted, bring your big coat. It's fully charged north in Harrogate for round two of B2B and B2C fun on the 19th of May. Move on down to London to the Excel for Move 2023 on the 21st and 22nd of June. And don't forget the BVRLA fleets in charge in July before we speed on over to Goodwood to join our partners, the AA at Goodwood Festival of Speed on the Sweet 16th. Yeah, if these hideous bingo meets radio DJ style puns aren't killing our ratings, I hope we can bring you back into our arms in time for autumn, where there'll be lots and lots and lots more to come from us at the EV Cafe slash EV Cafe Village people on tour. Enough of all that face-to-face -face excitement. We have further positive news to bring to you. Mega congratulations to legend Kate Tyrrell and James Coyle at EV Charge Safe for their FN50 award. And shout out to Osprey, who we saw announcing that they'll have achieved 1,000 charges by the end of the year across the UK. And that's predominantly rapid as well. So innovation is everywhere. And that's the whole point of these events and the EV Cafe to celebrate, showcase and collaborate. And maybe, just maybe, hang out after some of these shows. So that's really it from me. Back to the non-studio, you lovely lot scattered across the entire country today. I miss you all and can't wait to see you at one of these chart-topping event hits, which we're about to hear more about on this webinar. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Oh, isn't she good? Isn't she good? Bless her. <laughs> so much fun. Back to now my then, very hot room boiling. Can, can we also give a mention to My Energy, who've raised 30 million of investment for their business yes. to allow some expansion, creation of new buildings, and even more apprenticeships and working through the academy. I just think that's staggeringly good. <laughs> um, yeah, just boggles my mind that, that Jordan has achieved so much. Brilliant effort. Definitely. Um, so are we ready for our first guest of the day? And who could it be, you ask? Well, that's a question for Sam, but I will give you a hint. I've always wanted to say this. So oh, um, this go. gentleman lives up to the uh, his title of his song, which is Living a Vida Loca, which, <laughs> which, which, which translates to living the crazy life. I won't say any more. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, Johnny. I hope you can hear me okay. All right. Um, so in life, sometimes you come across a person that within minutes of meeting them, you know, they're going to be characterful and colourful, uh, engaging, passionate, driven, devoted and committed are attributes our next speaker strives to achieve and so very often falls short of. But we can't deny he keeps coming back for more. So for sure, we can at least commend him for that. Uh, last time he was on our show, I mocked his boring. Oh, no. LinkedIn profile, uh, which is uh, <laughs> it's the same as last year's intro. I swear, time, he failed all. This is your intro, and you only have yourself to blame, Richie. You know, you know, of course, we love you dearly, intros. and uh, you industry, and, and welcome again to the EV Cafe. That was amazing. As I, I died. Sam. I've died. Amazing, died. <laughs> On your welcome ass, to the EV Cafe, Richie. Thank you very much. Last time. 
I can't see myself. Am I on there? Oh, there we go. Hey. <laughs> hey. Enough. Hey. That was literally the best intro I've ever had. I'll tell you what. What, since last year when he, used it, when he used it last year? I, yeah, I think it was the same as last it's time. It's a new one. Exact same. I'm going to dig that out. I'm digging that out. I think it's I reckon we could voice same. over it. Literally <laughs> wrote a new one. Yeah, it's got December 2022 written on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you write when all you all we hear is... <laughs> it's a point where I made. It was like a remake of the 1980s Doctor Who movie, I think. I'm not sure, sure like a Dalek. But yeah, thanks for the intro, Sam. Really appreciate it. Great to be on here with some really, really friendly and happy faces. And welcome to everyone at the EV Cafe, as always. I am also at the CV show, so I'm hidden in the media room. I've managed to blag myself in there with even a free coffee. So how does that sound, um, Sam? And the internet connection is pretty good. <laughs> That's brilliant. So Sam is, um, Sam's the very version of Richie Martin. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> So um, the, <laughs> we're, we're talking about shows, right? So um, let's let's start. I mean, we've just come back from Australia. The um, the um, fully charged show has just come back from our first show out in Australia in Sydney, which is an absolute smash. But it just shows the show. How shows. was it, mate? How was it down under? I didn't go. I didn't go. So I have to. I have to admit, I didn't go. So I I, I gave my seat up to the the fabulous um, Jack Scarlett, who went out there. I thought content was better than glamour. All right, so um, it was um, sending him out made much more sense. But um, I hope he didn't get the seat that I was supposed to be in it because he's like six foot five and I'm five foot four. So um, <laughs> he might have been a bit cramped in the economy. But the show was absolutely fantastic, John. Um, so many people there. I think the appetite out there was it, it was just ready. It was just like a perfect storm. So Australia was ready. We were ready. Um, as usual, we're slightly ahead of where we need to be. So we saw the opportunity and struck while the iron was hot. Um, the the show was packed from start to finish with real ego um, eager EV nuts. Everybody looking for absolutely everything from commercial vehicles through to chargers, through to batteries, through to home energy, through to you name it. We had it, and it was there. It was absolutely fantastic, and it was received so well. Um, it reached the national newspapers, national um, TV, and we've just taken such a buzz from it um, coming back. Um, but of course. Once you've got rid of one show, then there's another six to do, right? At fully charged, we don't stand still. So um, what we've got is we've got a situation now where we've got, um, as Sarah says, at the end of the month, we go to fully charged south, which again is going to be bigger and better than ever. We're anticipating around 35,000 people will be there over three days of the show, which is literally a staggering number, a staggering number. And all these guys go in there for the right reasons, right? Because above the door, it says electric vehicle, clean energy shows. And they're there for, for exactly that reason. They want to find out more, but they're a very informed audience, a very informed audience. So we've all got to have our game absolutely A1 for them to go, go to it. And we've got a list of absolutely fantastic um, exhibitors from A to Z, right? from the AA to ZapMap, right? Literally all the way through the alphabet. You name it, we've got it. Um, Curbs has helped us out with the commercial vehicle zone, which is looking great. We've got a two-wheel test track, which is going to be fantastic. We've got the Giga and Mega Theatres, which are going to be absolutely full of fantastic content. You guys have got your own stand there for a day as well. I believe I'll see hopefully all of you there for a bit. Um, yep. We've even got like fantastic world launches, like BYD are going to be there launching a new car. So watch this space for that. Have a look at the website for those bits and pieces. We've even got um, Deborah Meaden opening the show on the Friday. So um, it's a real big draw for, for everyone. Um, but I suppose you can only do that if shows are popular, right? Okay, so the appetite's there for the audience. So people see us online, they go and find the information where they, where they want to, they pre-shop, okay? And then they want to see, but try before they buy. So that's where we sort of fit in. So the consumers and the B2B audience turn up in their thousands and thousands and thousands, um, and they find out what's next, what their next steps are, what, what, what's, what's innovative, what's new. Um, and very much like Sarah's breaking news, we do that face-to-face -to, -face to thousands and thousands and thousands of people at each of our shows. So, and then we're launching another show, which is coming up in Harrogate, which is um, towards the end of the following month, 19th. Um, this is a, another launch show. We've recognised that there's a need for that in that belt of the UK. It's very affluent and very under, under, um, un, 
underserved area of the UK. From that, we can welcome much more confidently guests from um, Manchester and Liverpool and that sort of area. They can come down really, really easily. And we're expecting between 15 and 18,000 people to that show as well. By the way, both those shows, both those shows are already sold out. All, all bar maybe one or two stand spaces, they are already sold out. But the tickets are still available for each. So help us get over that 35,000 mark. That would be amazing. Imagine trying to get that many people through the gates at the south and help us get up to 18,000 at the north. And then, of course, we go across the world to um, uh, the, uh, um, America and then Vancouver and then back at the end of the year to um, Europe, where we've got a show in Amsterdam, which is going to be fantastic, which we launch our award show at, which I hope for you guys will all be at, which is all nice and nice and new. Um, so that, that's this year. But the big news, I suppose, is, you know, every couple of weeks to fully charge, something fabulous happens, whether it be a brand new member of the team or whether it be a new bit of information that we've received inwards. But we're rebranding the name of the show from fully charged to everything electric. OK, from 2024. So that incorporates a lot more scope for what we can we can we can offer. So it's not just about electric vehicles. It's not just about, um, um, you know, charging. It's not just about the, the things that you, you, you maybe um, are used to seeing at, um, um, uh, that are fully charged. I think it's a much better title because it incorporates everything. Right. But we can then start fielding into the lifestyle side of things as well. So I think that's where you know we 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 um, we hit the DNA of of our audience much better with that title. And with that is the even bigger news. I don't know how high this mountain I can climb, but the even bigger news is that next year we're launching another show, another show in the UK in London, and it'll be on the 29th, 30th, 31st of um, of March. OK, so we'll be changing the dates around slightly with regards to the UK shows. And that will be at XL. And we've taken the whole of the south side of it, the Thames side of XL, which we are super, super, super excited about. And I just can't wait to get involved in all of it. I mean, I've got a great beard, as you may say, see already. But I think by the time the end of 2024, I might look like something on the front of um, a fish fingers packet, you know. And um, so... Um, oh. But yeah, that's us, um, and you know, um, we 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 welcome all to 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 the shows. Come and test ride cars. Come and test ride bikes. Come and find out for yourself. Get hands on. Get down and dirty. Shake hands. See people eye to eye, um, and just enjoy it. Because as Sarah alluded to earlier, it's not just the show; it's everything around the show, right? So you've got um, the um, the events in the evenings and all the launches. Sarah's got a hand up. That's like um, very professional. Oh, fishing. no, that's fish well, fingers. Oh, fish fingers. <laughs> there you go. That's that's fully charged slash everything electric for 2023 and 2024. Thank you very much, yeah. Richie. Please do How stay on um, as we will be opening the mail room very shortly. Oh, I wanted um, to ask a question. Hey, we've got time, actually. Believe it or not, Sarah, we have actually got time. So. Okay, well, I just don't know how you're doing it. I don't know how you're still standing, Richie. I really don't know how you're doing it. You're absolutely smashing it. How have you been managing this insane workload, keeping a smile for everyone and growing your, when you said Bernard Matthews, that's turkey, your fish fingers beard? <laughs> well, the fish fingers beard sort of looks after itself. So, but, <laughs> Is it just going to get really uh, long like it. Gandalf? <laughs> yeah, I'll be like some sort of weird, weird wizard by the end of it, I'm sure. No, no, no. Walk away from the wizard chat. Move on. <laughs> Move away. Yeah, quickly. Walk away. So, Walk away. Um, how do we do it? I, I think, you know... So how do you do it? Obviously, at EV Cafe, we're all about supporting each other, mental health. And people often ask us, how do you fit in so much? I don't know how you fit in so much. How do you cope? How do you decompress? How do you retain that excitement for your big events? Uh, well, it's because it's exciting. It, it, is. it is. It naturally is. You know what? If, you, if you've got an appetite for something, then you, you find things easy. Some people wake up in the morning. I, I really, I do fear, and, you know, I, I look out for these people who I know that wake up in the morning and they dread going to work on a Monday. You know, those people that, you know, and they have to, right? Because we've all got to work. We've all got bills to pay, family to support and do the right, the boring things like, you know, um, life admin. We've got to get these things done. But other people are really lucky, like myself, that do something that they really, really enjoy, find really, really important. I'm, I'm making change, right? But I do it with a team of people that are absolutely fantastic, you know, and they are experts. Every single one of them are experts in what they do. You know, from Robert, Dan, to Imogen, to Jack, 
to Joe Caesar, to the girls in the office, who I can, I can name them all, you know. We all get on really, really well, and we're all looking out for each other, and we're all looking for opportunities to make this splash as big as we possibly can, just to make the momentum, because we think it's important enough to make change. And I suppose we just have to make it happen. And with regards to me and how I do it, it's, it, I've always been like this. I've always been this dynamo that keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. So um, long, long may that continue. I'll probably end up um, plugging my, myself into one of Sam's charges mm -hmm. later on just to keep going. <laughs> I will just say that the community is looking out for each other because Carlo is ordering a beer care package for Richie. There oh, you go. thanks, Carlo. Richie, oh, thank you, mate. That. I'll pick it up. <laughs> I quite like it. It's, on, isn't it? it's one of the interesting things which I love about this this area. In some other businesses, you'd be sitting here as the EV cafe going, <laughs> fully charged, they're our competition. Or you'd be saying, ITT Hub, oh, we can't play with them because we've got our own thing and we do webinars and we do this. And what we found is that we all come together because the greater good, this bit about trying to decarbonize and clean up transport is far more important than any ego, than any brand values. It's about us all coming together, holding hands and all running in the right direction. A hundred percent, you know, and I, I don't want to be, do a Sam and like use the same thing as I used last time I was on it. But... <laughs> 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 it's... <laughs> it's all about collaboration, right? Yeah. You know, you look what Kate Tyrrell's doing. You look at what um, the, the the community, the, just even the small snapshot of what you, of the people that we see on the EV Cafe. And I I try and tune in as often as I can, however busy I can, wherever I am in the world. I even tuned in when I was out in San Diego at stupid o'clock in the morning just to see what was going on. Because I feel part of it. And they feel part of us. And that's what makes us all successful. And mm. ultimately will make our message and our change successful. It's because it's important, Right. And that's what that's what it's all about. You know, the whole thing, everything electric, everything fully charged, everything EV cafe, everything commercial, everything charging, everything fleet, all parts of it, all joined together to make one powerful message. And I think that's why you've got a smile on your face, Sarah, is because we all have, you know, we all have. And because we know we're doing the right thing. You know, we don't have to. We, we, there's no guilt. We're doing the right thing. Absolutely. And jokes aside, that's where this innovation is born. This is why we do this show once a year. We do an event special every year because that's where we're going to see the stuff that in a couple of years' time will be mainstream. It's a bit like a catwalk model, but for EVs. And they'll, those will trickle down into everyone's everyday lives. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see you at the end of the month at Fully Charged. Thank you so much for coming on to Infuse about it. Now go and enjoy the CV show. Not that I'm jealous at all. I'll send you some photographs. Don't worry. <laughs> Remember the time stamped uh, 22 past 12, where Richie gave a great speech about collaboration in the industry, and we can use it for a short break. <laughs> yeah, we should. Actually, John made a really nice I look forward to that being part of my intro next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we are out of time now. So, um, but Richie, please stay on as we will open the mailroom shortly for more questions. But it's now time for our next guest on the show. Who could it be? Now, I would say over to Sam, but after his last attempt at an intro, um, it's probably best that I do it. So thanks for sending this script over, Sam. Here it goes. So Carlo is a venue director for Farnborough International and Overseas. Farnborough's non-aerospace event portfolio, including the wonderful ITT hub. More on that later. He is committed and an active member within the events industry and active in several leading industry trade associations. Indeed, in the past, was president of International Live Events Association, the ILEA UK. Carlo has always been a great supporter of the EV Cafe, and we are very grateful for what he and the ITT Hub has done for us. Little known fact, he's actually Australian. Who knew? So without further ado, Carlo, a very warm welcome to you. And uh, what have you got on for us today? Now it's time for me to promote him as a panellist. Hello, Carlo. Welcome to the EV Cafe. <laughs> uh, I must say, Sam, I was really nervous reading your script. I thought, this is your opportunity to stitch me up. <laughs> I very nearly oh, did. I very, oh. I very nearly did and decided against it. <laughs> well, anyone other than Carlo, we might have done. Hi, Carlo. All right. 
that took a bit of lag so yeah it just has uh, taken a bit of time to get live or there. carol as paul seems yeah to it's carol i mean uh, you know I, i'm a bit offended because anyway, i spent some time with him yesterday we had a selfie and everything yeah he gets my name wrong so <laughs> un- rubbishy un- typing. unbelievable he's just too quick Look, look, guys, really appreciate it. Thank you for the intro. Um, yes, I am actually Australian. So, you know, with comments of Bonza and Kangaroos, you know, I'll be hearing them um, for probably the next couple of weeks through ITT Hub. I'll start talking like this to make Paul more comfortable. Um, but no, it's not a problem. Um, but look, yeah, in a ITT Hub, Innovation in Technology and Transport. Um, I will want to probably start and talk about look, what Richie talked about is community. You know, we are trying to drive something forward for the community. I was there at the CV show yesterday, you know, and, you know, seeing the colleagues from the SMMT, you know, and it's not about, oh, we're all trying to brush shoulders. We're all trying to get the same people. You know, for us, it's about the trajectory that we want to take that, you know, and that was why it was just as important to see, you know, BBC Breakfast getting six million viewers talking about commercial vehicles because that's a catalyst for us as well. You know, the more people are talking about it, the more people are resonating what this industry and this sector is trying to do. And the same as what happens at Fully Charged and, you know, on a global scale now as well, you know, helps us really push the direction of travel for where we want ITT. And, you know, I think for, for me, the passion that I have for commercial vehicles, um, it's probably only been around for two years because I didn't really know much about it before then, um, before this kind of landed on my landed on my plate, working with Mark Griffin through the launch, through through the pandemic and, and getting the show out the other side of it. And, you know, we've, we've had to reinvent and really work out where we are and trying to push towards this net zero position, you know, and, you know, looking forward to, to the show on the, the 10th and 11th of, of May, which is, you know, two weeks after um, with a gap in between of, of coronation and, and a couple of bank holidays um, after fully charge and, and the, the Richie show. Um, but look, we're so looking forward to it. We've got 85 exhibitors. The show is all indoors this year. You know, we've tried to guarantee the weather, but if I put a roof over everyone, no one's going to get wet. I thought that was probably the best option. <laughs> um, but you know, we've got some great new things this year. So we're, we're launching destination net zero magazine, um, pavilion. So we're working with them, um, to bring the likes of Volvo, Mercedes, Iveco, DAF and Vertilis. You know, and that's covering everything from a hydrogen vehicle to an electric vehicle to a gas powered vehicle. You know, so we're really showing what the different ecosystems of the market can do in our driver for net zero. You know, and if you go and add all of the other things into what we're doing around, you know, government pavilion and getting the likes of Transport for the Southeast, getting Zemo, Innovate UK and Zenzi, as well as having, you know, participation from DFT, that's really powerful to try and help our exhibitors propel that message to government you know and i think that's something that we've always tried to be that forefront on government is something that we've really stood for um and it's again you know having jesse norman there on on day two as well is, is really powerful for us as part of our co-located conference with our our friends from logistics uk but having that sort of representation at our show really probably sets us aside a little bit in terms of where we want that conversation to go. You know, we're association owned. So everything that we make from this show goes back into reinventing ITT Hub better for its exhibitors and for its visitors, you know, and allowing us to evolve, you know, and looking at everything that we do, you know, working with the likes of National Grid around an energy and electrification theatre, working with Samsara, who is sponsoring our content theatres for commercial fleet and passenger fleet. You know, this year we've got over 50 sessions across five content areas with over 90 speakers and panelists. You know, that is an like an 80% increase on what we did last year. Because, you know, the feedback we had was great show and everything like that got a bit wet. Um, so we made a few decisions there, but they wanted to see more content. They wanted to see more about learning. You know, and I think that's the big thing is education. We're still in such a education phase as the sector tries to really develop and move forward with what the OEMs are trying to do with some of the disruptors, whether it be a Volta, a Teva, um, an HVS yesterday and seeing their launch of the CV show, you know, and then things that we want to be seeing. We want to see these new innovations, these new catalysts to markets, these new disruptors into the market, whether it be switch mobility or a bot or a, a what. I mean, you're saying all these names and it's like these guys didn't really exist in this market four or five years ago. They had the fruition. They had the ideas. Mm-hmm. You know, and now we're starting to see the fruits of their labor you know, and that's probably the most exciting part for us. You know, we've seen these guys developing, 
now they're coming to market and we're actually seeing products you know we don't want we want them to come into products and i think they've learned lessons from others as well you know and i'm not going to name names but we know that if you try and accelerate too fast and you don't have the right infrastructure backing to launch these products you're not going to bring them in fruition and at scale to market and it's really good to see that they're taking their time to do it um and making sure that they've got the investment background to, to do that but you know looking at you know the cv show and looking at the show that we've got you know we're covering everything that is very technology-led and you know kind of companies like you know geotap for example obviously a big supporter of the ev cafe you know and, and obviously they're they're with us as well but you've got the likes of jammer and takasis and, and samsara coming with their technology elements which are you know they are working from an efficiency perspective to make sure we are getting the right elements for net zero it's not just always about the vehicle is it it's about everything else that comes in part of that value change and you know the other part we see is so much exhibitor to exhibitor sales you know because it is that ecosystem and that's what i guess ITT Hub is trying to create a community ecosystem of exhibitors and visitors where we have that kind of relationship with everyone. You know, and obviously, look, not forgetting, you guys are obviously going to be there as well. We're really looking forward to extending our partnership with you guys, you know, and, and having the EV Cafe back at ITT Hub um, once again um, in literally a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much, Carlo. Um, we do have time for a couple of questions before we go to the grand finale of today's lineup. So, Sarah, I'm looking at you because you get a hand up. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, I absolutely love the ITT Hub. We do as uh, EV Cafe very much. So we've announced sponsors there. We've seen collaborative deals happen before our eyes at ITT Hub. Um, and this year, the uh, National Grid or Grid are pulling together their uh, stage again, their energy theatre, where there'll be lots of talks about encouraging something else the EV Cafe believes in, which is entrepreneurship and getting uh, new apprentices or reskilling and upskilling to get more people into our industry. So there'll be a talk going on about that. And also, how can we encourage Fleet to make the transition? So not, as you say, loads to see, but also loads to hear. Uh, so I, I cannot wait. Wonder if I might have a moment, Johnny, just to point something out to those that watch. Uh, somebody just WhatsApped me and said, "You all look as though you're doing something else." Here's the news: we are. Um, <laughs> this doesn't all happen by magic, and so we've got the chat box, and we constantly are putting in comment there. We have the Q and A box where we're constantly commenting. We have our WhatsApp groups open so that we can communicate with each other to make sure that we give Carlo and Richie and all of the guests the best opportunity they can have to get their messages out on time and to schedule. So whilst it looks like we're all thoroughly disinterested <laughs> in what's going on in front of us, actually, we're sweating bullets here, people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and people do text us. Like some people don't want to put their their comment publicly, so they'll text me to ask yeah. me to say something. So yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, it does look like that. Um, I also quite like to put the sliders around and you know, like they used to do on University Challenge, be above each other. But yeah, we're we're constantly trying to spin the plates. I might look all calm and collected on top, but I am flapping underneath. I can assure you that. <laughs> Swan we don't we don't want to know about that. Oh. <laughs> Get the ruin it, John. Um, I have to stop. Uh, for a moment it's, it's now time for a, our, our grand finale our final guest speaker again i'll do the honors as, as sam struggling with internet connectivity um so our final guest is nick smith and he's the ceo of bot limited and is responsible for the uk vehicle conversion and workspace storage solutions business they have a manufacturing operation in cornwall that exports across the world and a growing partner network they employ over 480 people in the UK alone with a turnover of 55 million pounds. Fun fact, he once tried to be a pop star in his late teens with many record company introductions, but alas, like Sam Clark, his dancing let him down. <laughs> I don't believe it. He's... Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Nick, great, to, great to have you on the EV Cafe. I'm gonna talk over Sam right now, so. <laughs> Johnny, Here's something works bit. now. <laughs> you missed a bit, Johnny. You, you didn't talk about the location of the conversion centres. Could you just... Um... No one heard. <laughs> you, you, you carry on. You carry on. I was just going to say, I can affirm that Paul was missing. It's not true. <laughs> Am I the only one struggling to hear? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it should be should be working. 
Uh, we can hear you, you Corb. Yeah. We can't hear Nick. Would you like me to sing something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Maybe I'll do it like this, but Joel. Is that better? It's Honestly, Nick, quiet. no. Yeah. We've got a technical. Just take Paul's Whoa. microphone and do a solo favor. Yeah, no, he's got it. He's got my microphone. Right. But we can hear you, though. Okay, hang on one second. Ah, no, that's... Uh, Going through to his AirPods, isn't it? There we go. Right. How about that? That's Better? it. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, guys, sorry. All good. Perfect. So, yeah. Well, you can keep rubbing my knee if you like anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity to be here on, on this uh, webinar. Um, so, yes. so, yeah, we wanted, Nick, what we wanted, wanted to find out was, you know, why are you exhibiting and what do you get out of exhibiting a, a show like this? Well, you guys, you, you mentioned our, our size in the UK. We've been pretty dominant, I would say, in our fleet provision in the UK with over 300 people in our conversion centres in Ashby and in Cumbernauld. And we are, yes, a British manufacturer as well. But we also have manufacturing capacity in Germany and Hungary. So we're part of a group. We do about 200 million euros as a group. So you know, a sizable business. We've been through quite a bit of change in the last year, actually, structurally and organizationally. Um, and what we recognize that we were very dominant in the provision of fleet versions. We really had missed, actually, over the years, a kind of partner regional network. And uh, I think for us, this was a, a really interesting opportunity. And a show like this gives us the ability to kind of open the doors and talk to people that we weren't talking to before. So very proud of our heritage and our legacy that we have in our fleet business, but clearly uh, the opportunity to deal with a more local regionalization. And this really fits with the sustainability as well. That Clearly, you know, we have a, a wonderful setup in Ashby where we do about 35 million pounds worth of conversion a year. But I mean, if you're in Brighton and you've got an EV vehicle, you're not going to get it to Ashby and back in, in a single charge. So we need to think more about our regional setting as well, not only to grow new business opportunities, but also to protect the existing fleet, which is really becoming an issue. So, I, I mean, I love uh, th these kind of shows anyway. It's always great to collaborate. I mean, it's a bit cliche, yeah, but uh, the Zooms and the, the kind of emails, but really just sitting together and having time has been wonderful. Um, I love the bit about the competitive. I mean, I think we are really showing a, a more open culture in box. Um, and, and this is really enjoyed by myself going around to our competitors, asking them to come and join us for a beer. I mean, it's freaking them out. And the more it freaks them out, the more I want to do it. So um, we had quite a number of competitors on our stand yesterday. We're doing a happy hour, unofficial happy hour at four o'clock. Come and get a beer. I've got the Kylie music going. And, and they're like, is it okay to come on the stand? Please have a beer. Come on. I think we're facing similar challenges right now. We have to almost stand together. No collusion. But I think with the, uh, the direction of the OEM agency model, leasing companies we all have to kind of stand together a little bit more and collaborate so and i'm hearing that more and more that they they're welcoming them and we have to say it bod is a, a significant uh, contributor to the industry in that regard so we we maybe have to put the olive tree out and say come and join us come in uh, come and have a chat so we welcome that it's very difficult to get a pure <clears throat> roi i think richie made a good point you know if if you just focus on the show it wouldn't stack i mean mm. for me it's a follow-up it's a follow-up conversation it's a pre-build and so forth uh, because it's an expensive gig and we've made a big show this year. We really wanted to show not just about the products, but more about our people, our sustainability and, and our regional appetite as well. So it's been wonderful to meet new people that we, we can say, oh, Bot is now open. Yeah, we're open to talk to new people around the country. So I don't think you can do that any kind of avatar. I think you need to be physically present here as well. So it's been very beneficial from that perspective. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take advantage of being here with Nick and just ask, uh, ask, <laughs> ask another question because, I mean, as, as a business, you're coming out with new messaging yes. and, you know, particularly around ESG and, and kind of helping businesses tackle those challenges. Is the show an opportunity to educate? Yeah, and I think we're, we are taking quite a humble approach towards the kind of sustainability. I've, I've seen a lot of the kind of greenwashing. We want to be this by 2037. And, and it's all grand to have a vision, but actually we've rather focused on where we need help, where we are where we are on the journey. But what we said is, hey, we're focusing on the planet, the people, um, and, and we want to really want to look at what are the actual key KPIs we're doing at a grand level? You know, what are we really doing about waste reduction? What are we doing about employee retention, flexibility, employee welfare right now? And I think demonstrating those topics is actually more important right now. So we're being very open about it. So, hey, we're, we're on a journey. We're on a roadmap. We don't know what the final goal will eventually look like. And, and actually, we're learning a lot from that. And what we're yeah. finding is many of the big customers, particularly the big guys, are saying, we are demanding to see your policies. I say, that's fine. Show me yours. Yeah, uh, we're still working on it. Yeah, likewise. Come on, let's be open about things. So yeah, yeah. it's what I'm really interested in is the conversations we're having now is so much more about sustainability from particularly the main fleet customers 
than the price or the product. Yeah. I mean, I've got five vehicles on the stand and most people are just coming straight for the conversation. Mm. The tenders, the, the sustainability is taking a higher precedence now more than ever. Yeah. So we have to be serious about it. Mm. And um, but, I, but I enjoy it because I think, again, taking it around the people side, we should be doing this stuff anyway. And I think the adversity that we've been through in the last couple of years yeah. as a society is forcing these issues. Mm. So... I think the, the mistake is just to talk about purely electric vehicles. For me, it's about the people a bit, the, the waste, mm. and that's really interesting. As a manufacturer as well, there's a yeah. lot we can do in that regard. So um, I'm very encouraged to hear that. And I think we have a, again, I think we have a leading role in bot to do that. And we're green. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> How about everybody else? Any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, we've uh, it's it's more a statement to be honest with you and it's something to do with what we've just purchased so to go to shows we yeah. decided that we would all wear the same outfits so we'd have our own polo shirts made we've done it before but this time we took a bold decision to say do you know what we're going to look at the whole carbon impact of what we're doing and the sustainability of the products that we're purchasing. And what that's done is it's doubled the price of each of the garments that we're buying because we're being sustainable. But it's the yeah. right decision to make because we've got to walk the talk. You can't just keep doing the same old, same old. And to be honest, just transitioning your fleet and leaving everything else alone is just as much greenwashing as, as anything else. Yeah. It's just as bad. Yeah. You've got to look at things holistically, haven't you, Nick? Absolutely. And I think that's, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the day, from our side, if you look at what we do, again, on the, on the people product side, we can show you many options where we say, oh, we have new solar power on our, on our manufacturing. We use the rainwater in, in waste recycling. So I have many topics there. But what I, what I don't want to see, um, forgive me, is plastic bottles lying around with water. I mean, so we're talking mm. about ESG and then we've got plastic bottles. So what's all that about? So yeah. we're we're having to walk the talk. And I think we have to be humble. We're getting it wrong in some cases, all of us, you know. Uh, we've made a, a concerted effort to have no plastic bags and we only have, you know, uh, recyclable cups and so forth. So it's a little step to make the difference. And I, I fully agree. I mean, we're on a journey. We have to learn this as well. I mean, regards to Unicorn, by the way, I have these nice hot shoes, which I love. I could have sold these four times over. I think they're amazing. Um, these will be on eBay Friday, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> but no, you're right. We, we've got to walk the talk on these things. And like I said, let, let's be on a, a journey together on these things. One thing I forgot to mention, which I think it, I missed also on the collaboration piece, was a vertical horizontal bit. Sometimes we're in our world and we just see what we do and we look at our competitors. But the beauty of this kind of show, we actually get a bit of time to talk about other people, other areas who say, hey, we could work with you. Could we share your footprint? So I have a, a totally different company today saying we've got a footprint around the country and you want to grow. Why don't we share properties? Why don't we share? I like that. Wow. So I think that's, again, where we can be sustainable and utilize each other's resources. So yeah. sometimes you wouldn't get a horizontal vertical integration yeah. unless you're at a show like this. So we've got a couple of questions. Right. Sam and Sarah, I don't know who was first. Sarah Somebody was first. Clearly Sarah me. Clearly, <laughs> clearly me. Uh, <laughs> Sam, you can come and ask it in person later if you want. Sam, you better uh, write Sarah this go. down. We're not going to be able to hear you anyway. Um, I just wanted, Nick, to ask you about, you've had some recent investment. Uh, is it an investment for your Weybridge at your site in Ashby, Delazuch, which is all yes. about making sure you've got access accurate readings, which in EV or alternative fuels is so essential to efficiency. I just wondered, could you give a synopsis of how that came about and what that entails? Yeah, I'm probably the least technical guy in the business, by the way, as well. So <laughs> I'm the big Go for it. You really caught me out. <laughs> I, I signed off the investment. There was clearly a need from, from what we do. I mean, one of the challenges is what happens after uh, it goes out the side. That's one of my worries. I mean, I used to run a van fleet, actually, for, for steel material handling. I had 150 engineers. So what was going on afterwards was probably more of a risk but we, this is a compliance issue for us as well. So making sure we do the right thing, that our van wrapping, we say, is that our aluminium lightweight um, will become uh, more and more relevant as we go forward, particularly with the smaller vehicles. Um, so we have to do it. It's, it's a matter of um, necessity now to have that kind of weighing situation. But again, I, I hold caution because we have lots of discussions with our customers about that. And then I say, but how do you really govern what happens two weeks later when the guy's got too much product and waste and all sorts? So. Um, it's, it's a long discussion, I would say. But you're doing but, your uh, bit, which I think is We really have to critical. do our bit at that yeah, point of sale, absolutely. But but it's education. Yeah? We have to keep that education and regulation going. Yeah. It's our responsibility to be part of these associations and support. Yeah, yeah. and it is critical, that, that transitional bit, because mm. the, the weight of the vehicles is going up. And, and you know, knowing your curb weight or the weight of the vehicle as it leaves bot so that they know exactly yeah. how much payload they have is absolutely critical 
critical to keep them legal and safe. I mean, that's where I think the OEM agency and the way OEM are moving is interesting for us in innovation. Do we work with them to connect so that we can look at weighing on board weighing mm -hmm. um, for the van stocks, this kind of stuff? We have been delivering. So I think the technology bit will continue to develop. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of that. At the moment, again, it's early, I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Should we let Sam try? Yeah. Uh, before, <laughs> before Sam asks a question, can I quickly ask that um, Carla and Richie turn their cameras back on um, and before we open the mailroom? If you have any questions for us or our guests, then now is the time. Please use the Q&A tab. Sam, I'm looking at you as well. Please use the Q&A tab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, hope, I hope this works. Uh, Nick, I also run a, a van fleet, so hopefully we can swap some stories later when I, um, hopefully I'll yeah. see you later in the flesh. But my question for you was you made reference to four or five vehicles on your stand. What are they? What have you got on your stand today? Yep, so we got a man, in fact, one that makes we've got a Google, a little tiny electric Google that's creating mm -hmm. all the noise right now. So that's mm -hmm. fantastic with our Vario 3. Uh, we got a man vehicle out there as well, fully loaded, Vivaro, Hiki Vivaro. So, um, yeah, please come and have a look, come and have a touch in the field. But I, I'm, so I'm amazed by the amount of people actually just coming and talking about sustainability and ignoring the products, which stresses me out because we put a lot of <laughs> time and money into those vehicles. But uh, coming up with the Google, I have to say, it's been a real, real eye catcher. It's tiny and we've got wide size matter. I'm a short guy, and uh, it's creating a lot of interest. So come, please come and have a look. Surely the man vehicle should be renamed the they vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Hey, uh, <laughs> look, I used to have a lot of Google vehicles back in the day, and we used to have to fill up the um, the, the lead acid batteries with um, deionized water. So hopefully things have moved on a bit since yeah. then. <laughs> Don't have a look, we'll take a selfie. Carlo's asked a really interesting question in the uh, in the chat area, and he's asked us as an exhibitor at shows how important sustainability on stands and the suppliers that they use, uh, which I think is a brilliant question, Carlo. Thanks for asking that. It is important, I guess, partially for me. A lot of the stuff that we have at the show is reused in other shows, so it goes from one show to another and you have countless shows at Farnborough including Spacecom which was really brilliant and I love the idea that we've got space exhibition going on in the UK um, but what do you guys think is it important Sarah you've always got an opinion on sustainability of, of stuff yeah I was just in the chat with Rob Anderson um, talking about the fact that net zero seems to be the goal for everyone and that's not going to be as simple as people think net zero is it really shouldn't just be about netting off your problem you first got to measure it own it try to reduce it and then if you can't reduce it any further than a certain point you need to net and offset that last little bit so here on the ev cafe you mentioned the t-shirts but obviously we're looking at our travel our arrangement our materials mm -hmm. you know we're all trying to practice what we preach as, as a as a brand um, but it is tricky and you do need to go through the painful process of taking the time to measure it all first. And so, yeah, we were just teasing in the chat about people go, oh, I took a flight, but I offset it. Well, that still doesn't make it OK. It's about reducing the number of flights that you do take, making it only the essential ones like a, a family holiday or maybe one work trip. Um, and then, yes, offsetting is better than doing nothing. But net zero shouldn't be all about finding a quick fix. Um, Quite right. It's a fully charged. We um we do have the discussion with all of our exhibitors about how they how they present themselves. Obviously, it's up, ultimately up to them. But you know, we we try and champion as much as we can. Um, you know, reusable stands. Um, you know, we ask people not to bring um, you know, flyers that are just going to be go to go to waste and try and avoid plastics and stuff like that where they can as well. I mean, ultimately, it's the decision of the the um, the, the exhibitor. But you know, we do we do have those conversations, and I have to say, most of our exhibitors are very much on board with that. Then something else that you mentioned with regards to flights and stuff. You know, one of the reasons why I didn't go to Australia, I know I was being a bit flippant earlier, is that we just took the essential team members down there. That's what's part of it. We, we've got a large crew of people around the world. We ensure that there's boots on the ground in Asia, in, in America, and in Europe, and in Australia, so that we don't have to travel. So that you know, it is a Zoom call or a, or a conversation, or everything's much more local. And there's two reasons for that. One is obviously we've got this bigger message to do, and two, you understand the territory much better when you're local. Okay, so you get to understand the people that you're dealing with, and I think that's super important as well. So, you know, every step is a, is a new step forward, isn't it? So as long as we make the right steps and we're conscious of how we do them, I think that's the, that's the way to do it. I'm going to open I up a can of worms. verticals, isn't it? 
Um, yeah. It's looking at the verticals and everything that the supply chain has. And you know, I think that's what we're trying to do here at ITT Hub is look at, you know, it's not just our impact, but how do we educate our exhibitors with the better decision making? And, you know, even look at transport. If you look at the majority of stands, if you've got a lot of a big European show, you know, that, that travel of that product is coming from Poland, it's coming from all over the world, potentially, you know, and you've got those transportation costs. And I think we're trying to solve that from a commercial vehicle perspective to get those transportation to electric hydrogen or whatever else. Thing. So it's, it's about educating educating a variety of different industries because the exhibition industry which is obviously what i'm heavily involved in and same as richie you know they're probably not up at as much as the commercial vehicle industry in a whole so it's how we educate all these different visitor profiles to make sure that they understand it and you know we're doing the same things as a venue perspective you know we want to take our site and our venue off grid with solar within the next 10 months you know because then it means that the shows that are coming into here have a sustainable angle that we're powering our own things you know, we're not taking anything off grid. So it doesn't matter whether I'm buying it from a renewable source. It doesn't matter. I'm making our own energy. And that's just as important from a venue perspective to look at everything from, we talk about plastic bottles and, and everything else. All of those different granulator areas to look at how they impact on our customers and our shows as well. Yeah, leading by example, mate. Exactly that. I have a, a, an interesting question then. So if we were to lead by example, five presenters, we only take the key staff to an event. Who would you leave at home? How dare you? Wow. <laughs> How it, is, it is a second uh... question for that, JC. Why would you ask such a horrible question? Yeah, look how sad we are now. Sometimes the question, the difficult questions have to be asked. But aren't Let you already at home, John? Haven't we already left you up in Scotland? <laughs> I'm always at home. I do nothing. There you go. That's your here. answer. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. We leave behind the one who takes up the most room, John. So unfortunately, Bye. it's you. <laughs> so I, I've got a follow up question to the, the talk that was gone to for Nick, really. Nick, in the process of organizing, Organizing your event have you have you have you been sort of guided in in regard to that that sort of sustainability are you are the suppliers of stands and the suppliers of t-shirts um, are they all talking about that or are you I, I would say not enough i think on the things we can do certainly so again we looked at our distributed stuff uh, the bottles all that kind of stuff um economics drive and all these things as well i'm afraid to say the stand build is expensive so we have to think about reusing it again for a second third generation um I think there's a lot more work to be done on that, to be bold, bold mm. to be honest. Um, yeah. So, yeah, economics will drive these conversations. Um, yeah. it's, we need to do this right. So, yeah, on what we could do, for sure, I don't think there was a big enough discussion about how we could make that a, a more interesting yeah. uh, reusable stand. I think a lot of money's made in making these stands and yeah. dumping them. We have to think differently if we want to be really brave, Yeah, I would say. Just but there's a legacy of that, Nick. We have there? to move. Oh, um, so, yeah. No, it's okay. I'm just letting you know that we have to move um, uh, to let some people come in and use the room. Uh, we're yeah, borrowing the room for the Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to move um, and uh, let these guys in. So uh, carry on, please. Thank you. Whilst <laughs> they move, John, I have a question for you, Mr. Operations Director. I want to know, where will the EV Cafe team be making their mark this year? What events will we be participating in? Did you listen to the news at all? Because I just gave a super hot run. <laughs> Those that join late, perhaps we can talk about that a bit can more. Can do it again? <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Yeah. No. yeah, Sarah will put it on the LinkedIn group, but we're all over the shop. Basically, <laughs> if there's a show, we'll be there. Uh, but I, clearly, I won't be. I'll just be left at home. Um, there are a couple of questions, however. Um, and Richie, one for you, I think. Somebody's asking about driving on a Spanish driving license to test drive vehicles. Um, that's Sebastian, our good friend from uh, Barcelona. So could you perhaps have a look at the information that's available on the website? Is there stuff there about... I don't know questions. specifically. I think there was two questions. One was Spanish and one was Canadian. I, I did yeah. see. Um, so I've already emailed the office and found out um, uh, to find out because I don't know off the top of my head. But I think it might be um, sort of supplier, supplier specific. I think that's hard to say. Um, so I will find out um, and then I'll let you guys know. But um, if you guys haven't, if those guys want to link in with me on LinkedIn or whatever, um, message me directly and I'll let you know exactly what's going on. Cheers, gorgeous. A um, couple of other things. Mark Griffin, I know, um, Carlo, you've answered the question, but he's two things. One, he's 
talked about uh, on Monday the 15th of May, we have Mental Health Week start. Uh, Mental Health Week, very, very important to all of us. Uh, so if you can support Mental Health Week with some of the content that you put out through social media and so on, uh, and give some of your own inner um, challenges, journeys that you've been on, uh, because only by talking about it and getting it out there will we ever remove the stigma of, uh, of the mental health challenges that we all carry. The other thing that Mark was asking was around charging at Farnborough. And I know that in the past, Carlo, there has been charging at Farnborough. Are we able to charge electric vehicles when we come? Yeah, there will be. Um, and actually for ITT Hub, we're, we're trying to get it in for fully charged. We're digging the holes currently. Um, so we've just done a partnership with Rolex um, and we will be putting in vehicle charging to up to 22 vehicles um, on site, which is another step change for us as a venue perspective um, with 22 kilowatt charging units on site as well. So we're working with uh, Rolex and Monta um, and hopefully... Fingers crossed. Um, the holes are being dug, the cables are going in and they'll be in on time. But we are, we're, we're pushing as hard as we can to get that done, ready for fully charged. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Um, just a quick point on, on your point, John, with regard to the Mental Health Week. So as, as many of you all know, we've got the Evie Cafe Takeaway, a podcast that is getting to chat to many of the people Carlos has released this week or it was this morning, in fact, it was released. Um, so you can check in and check on on that. But we've got a great one from a guy called David Beanie. He's a mental health professional. Uh, and we're going to be releasing that as a special on Monday, the 15th of May. So and um, c come and experience me and John talking to David and, and actually getting some help from David live on the chat. All good stuff. Um, JB. I was just going to say, um, I'm sorry to announce that our, our live stream is nearing to an end. So, um, but don't despair. We're just about to get started with the after hour session where we'll have a chance to unwind with the presenters and audience. Um, but if you'd like to join in on the fun and you are currently watching from um, LinkedIn or YouTube, then you will need to hop onto Zoom. So I'm sure we can put a, a link in the chat right now and give them a, a moment or two to join the Zoom. But otherwise, it's a uh, bye bye for now for those watching on live stream. <laughs> Howdy bye. And I'm going, to try, I'm going to try and run an outro video. Let's give this a run. Yeah. <laughs>